Greetings, I'm Rob Chapman. And I'm the captain. We're at Anderton's. I'm not sure where you are, but now you're watching us, things are better in your life. Ah, well, I hope they are. And if we can bring a little joy, happiness, and uh, sexual delight uh, to the next <laughs> 10 minutes or so of your life, uh, we'll have done our jobs. Yes. Um, uh, I'm really excited. Are you? Yes. I can tell. I can tell that you're a bit excited too. I'm a little bit excited, yeah. I'm more excited for you, but, I, but I'm a little bit excited. Right. I had an idea. I phoned up Lee and I said, Lee, uh, we should chat about the videos we shoot and make them a bit more interesting and a bit more in-depth. And um, talk less about rubbish. things... Well, not less rubbish, <laughs> but we, we should do things that I think people want to see rather than just like, here's another pedal that does this and <laughs> change gloves and things. Yeah, thank you. And I said, um, what about a video where we try and find our yeah. first ever guitars? And Lee was like, Rob, surely you'll never find them. This is Mission Impossible. And Rob I was just like, went, well, that's your problem. Hang up, I'm going to Malta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, I did. Yeah. In fairness, Rob did give me a clue because he told me what his first guitar was. And it was a yellow Yamaha RGX 312. How, yes. how did you come across that? So I... And was it your first, first, first no, guitar? No, no. My first ever guitar was a, a white Strat copy called... It was like a Falcon. The yep. brand was Falcon. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was awful. It was with me for like... I got it on my 16th birthday. Thank you, Uncle Stuart and my, my dad, Russ, for buying that guitar. I was grateful. But it, it, didn't, it didn't inspire me and it was quite difficult to play. And I traded that up and I got my yellow Yamaha from Stag Music in Trowbridge, Wiltshire. Good old Stag Music Stag. in Trowbridge. If you're still in business, congratulations. They're not. Um, oh, they're not. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, um, I don't think they are anyway. I haven't been there for ages. Probably because uh, of those dastardly internet entrepreneurs Andersons have put them out. Right. <laughs> now, Lee couldn't know. find a yellow one, so I'm probably going to paint this yellow. Oh, really? Well, I might have How to. How bad yeah. did you want the yellow one? Because this was, this was the first one, and this was easy to find. Right. Okay, so this was... Yamaha RGX 312, second hand. It came up on a cash converters site. I don't what? know. I don't know. Cash converters, if you, you'll know what that is if you live in the UK. It's like a pawn shop, basically, isn't it? Um, I don't know what you have in America that's the same thing, but you, you go in there and you, you, you trade in your, you know, you just give them something and they give you some cash. Dead easy. This was 60 pounds. <laughs> 60 pounds. I saw it. I just went, you know what? I'm not even going to bother phoning Rob to ask about this. I'm just going to buy it. Click to buy, and they have a web service, and it arrived like, not immediately, like about four or five days later. Clearly, they, they didn't know anything about it. There was no point in me emailing them questions about, you know, did, was it going to work or, you know, it was just a punt. But at 60 quid, what can you do? Now, in fairness, it did turn up, it literally turned up through courier in a, a dustbin liner. So it's a, it's a bit of a, it's, it is a bit of a miracle that it arrived in one piece. Yeah. I put it through our QC department, so it's had like a 40 pound setup on it. Right, oh, it's, which and is it's a good. great setup. Let me tell them, well, let me tell you guys what I loved about this guitar and why I really wanted, you know, to have it back in my life. Uh, and then ultimately, when Lee's talked about his first guitar, yeah. uh, which looks like a pretty seriously legit first guitar, um, we're going to go into the store and see what would we get now that's yeah. like the equivalent of this. So any idea what you paid for that when you bought it in, uh, what are we would have been, like 1990 It would have been like a, like a hundred and maybe almost 200 pounds or something like about that. About 200, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So, I loved so it. quite a good, like not the, the lowest price that you could buy, kind of like the one up from that. I remember maybe. it was the first time I had ever traded in a guitar yeah. and some money that would have been like pocket money yeah. to, to buy this guitar. I was obsessed at the time with Steve Vai and Dweezil Zappa. Yeah. And 
and also Nuno Betancourt because I yeah. just got porno graffiti at the age of yeah. like 16 and a half. Uh, and so I traded in and I got this yellow Yamaha and I remember going to the guy, oh, I thought Yamaha just made guitar, uh, made motorbikes. And he's like, well, they do, but in the same factories, they make metal parts for the yeah. guitars, drums. And I was like, wow. It's huge. And it had a sure. tremolo for the first time. I'd never used a it tremolo never, before. It didn't come with the tremolo arm, I'm afraid. So right, that's fine. But what's really cool, and you're going to get a close up of this, is you see, you just hook the strings in so there's no funny duddy locking yeah. it in place or whatever. So it was a great experience with the trem and a really solid mm. unit. And it does it does a go. <laughs> So that guitar is nearly 30 years old, right? Yeah. Oh, well, I know. So I say that guitar might, because I'm I, that may not be, of course, as old as the one that Rob started. Well, I'm but, 43 now, but you were, and I got this when I was 16 and a half. What I mean is this particular one may yes. not. May, but, you know, let's assume that this could well be a 30-year-old guitar. Yeah. 60 quid from cash converters. All I would say is if you're an absolute beginner and it does sound appealing to get a guitar for 60 pounds, I'm not sure that I would be confident enough that every single guitar that Cash, Convert Cash Converters is selling is going to be like brilliant and not faulty and all that kind of stuff. So I don't think I'd recommend that for a complete brand, you know, non-starter. You did a fret ride. polish on it as well. Probably. Um, I was going to say But this if you kind of know what to do with a guitar that needs a bit of TLC, yeah, yeah. a million percent Cash Converters, man. I, I was amazed. Wow. So that's, that's that one. Well, uh, let me just say something else. Yeah. I hadn't realised until about half an hour ago when I picked this up and got excited and widdly diddly, as you can imagine, how much, if you look at it, what does it remind you of? <laughs> well, you did... Oh, well, there's this bit here and... It's an ML1. There you go. So psychologically, it was imprinted on your DNA. Well, Hum Sing Sing, the little spoon cut, it's an ML1. And I'd never even considered mm. how much my first... Well, my, my proper first mm. guitar had an effect on me. Uh, Rosewood fingerboard... Maple neck, great sounding uh, pickups because you get from the. So yeah, I've just got to paint it yellow, cool. and then my well, dreams are fulfilled. That was basically what happened, was I said to Rob, video's on, uh, I've managed to get your guitar. Uh, I said, but there is one thing, and, he, and I'm, I, I, I'm, he's like, what, 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 what? I said, it's not yellow. And there was this moment on the other end of the phone <laughs> that I felt my dear friend Rob Chapman crushed by the fact but, that it wasn't going to get... So but it's fine, because you the managed search, to... The search continued. What? The search continued. And thanks to a lovely, lovely no. man on Facebook called Miguel, who found oh, me one oh, in yes. Spain, of all places. And then, so you've got to give a shout out to Miguel. Oh. He went to get it and he sorted everything out. He oh, even paid man. for it. On tr I mean, I gave what? him I gave him the money. Well, he paid for it out of his own pocket. And then I tried to give him the money and he refused to accept the full cost, the price that it cost me. So even Miguel actually paid for like 50 quid of this guitar or whatever. This yellow one was quite a lot more expensive than the black one. Probably more I'm realistic about what they would actually flabbergasted. Cost. So yes. So <laughs> happy birthday, right. even though it's not Thank your you birthday. Belated birthday present. Oh man. So yes, I found you. Holy sh Yellow one in Spain. Oh my God, you know what? Bought it over for you. It's so weird. You that... have to give a shout out to Miguel. It would never ever have happened had no, he not No, I'm going to send him a guitar. Oh, because okay. he's just got me a guitar and I have loads of guitars at home. But being reunited with my, with my banana guitar. <laughs> you know, I used to hang a rubber duck off the end of this. We well, you know what we need uh, to do. I've just realised there's no locking nuts on there, so we'll pitch we'll the We'll steal it off that off the one, one and then, and then I'm, I'm going to keep both of them and do dirty things with them. 
But I, I, yeah, I'm going to have to send him a guitar. So oh, well, there if you, you can go. get I've me his, his contact details. I've got his I'll, details on. We, gonna, we had a lot of PMing together to get what's this What's funny is that's exactly what I did with mine. I lowered the middle one so I could get my shred on. And as soon as I felt these knobs, yeah. it was like familiar territory. So exciting! <laughs> so there we go. I've, I've reunited you with with uh, wow. a guitar. Wow! This must have had some sort of sticker on the side. Look at the colour difference. Where there's oh yeah, something's. I bet that was the grip thing people used to do Maybe. sometimes. Yeah. These were made in Japan. Were they? <laughs> yeah, eighteen eighty. Uh, Yamaha. Since you can just see it here. Were they actually Japanese? made in? Japan, yeah. Wow. Oh, no, Taiwan. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't, Taiwan. Think, I don't think they were ever that expensive. So this guitar, <laughs> I, and, and again, <laughs> this guitar cost about £240, which, I don't know, I think that's probably a little heavy for what it's really worth, but again, the colour was a rarity and it was just, I had to do it. And, oh, man. Uh, and as I said, Miguel paid for some of it as well, so it didn't actually cost me that much. Uh, so there we are. That was uh, well. There you go. And well done, Miguel. There's a, every good deed and all that kind of stuff. If you get a guitar back in return, I think oh, that's no, I'll good absolute, karma. I'm absolutely good sending karma. Miguel a guitar. Thank you so much, man. So, want to know about this? Yeah. Okay. okay so <laughs> my first. So I started playing. Uh, I'd played a few different musical instruments growing up, and I think by the time I wanted to play the guitar, my dad was so sick of writing stock off out the store that he told me he wouldn't. Uh, buy me a guitar. I'd, I'd played bass for a bit. I had one of those Hona headless cricket bat shaped basses and I thought I was going to be the next best bass player but I very quickly realised that... Could you imagine if you'd become a bassist? Yeah I know but I just could I just I remember sitting at home and you know doing my stuff and learning from a book and everything and just going this is so boring because uh, <laughs> they've got no one to kind of jam with and I, and I guess that I guess that's the, the problem with a lot of you know, band instruments, if you take, you know, drums and bass and stuff like that, it, it is something where I guess the most fulfillment comes from being in a band. And I just didn't, then I didn't have the confidence. I wasn't ready for that. So I gave that back and I, and I bought with my own money, a, uh, an Aria acoustic guitar, 60 pounds it was. And I, you know, and I played and played and played until I could had a few chords down and stuff like that. And the ends of my fingers had toughened up. And I thought, I'm going to go and buy an electric guitar because that's ultimately what I want to play. And we had in the store where these uh, Fender had just released. So this, this is like 1987, 88, maybe. I think it was around about that time. And Fender had just released. We had in the shop this like deal on some Fender guitars that were made in Korea. So they were like super affordable Fender guitars. Yeah. I, I, I've got this figure in my head of about 200 pounds that it cost me. And I thought that was great because it was proper Fender. It wasn't like a Squire. At the time, you know, there wasn't really, you know, there wasn't the plethora of Fender guitars that there are now. So I certainly, I'm pretty sure at that time you either bought, you either just bought a Squire Strat or an American Fender Strat. There wasn't, there wasn't this idea of like, you know, 50,000 different variants of a, of a Fender Strat. So this was like amazing because I could kind of just about afford it. And I'm pretty sure, again, I paid for it out of my own money. I would have got obviously shop discount on it, but whatever, you know, so a couple of hundred quid. Uh, but the one I had was red and I was gutted I couldn't find a red one and there's no happy ending to this. I'm sorry that I haven't got a red one for you. Oh man, I looked <laughs> everywhere. And what I realized was that, that it would appear that Fender only did these Korean strats for about a year, maybe right. two years. And I, they were so hard to find. I found a couple of other black ones that had rosewood boards on, but, but mine was maple board, so I didn't want a rosewood one. And in the end, I found on Gumtree this one. And I think, again, I, I'm going to sort of go with the sort of the perils, again, of Gumtree. This was listed as, you know, all great condition and blah, 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 blah. Uh, it had this black pick guard with the white pickups is very much like a Dave Gilmore thing that someone's done as an aftermarket Yeah, it looks board, just like a Gilmore, like yeah. a relic Gilmore strap. And, and that's not, mine was red with a white scratch plate and I would have loved to have found that. I might even get this refinished just for the for the love of it. But everything else looks legit and, and original on this. Um, the only thing that's come through is the fretware is, I mean, there's my guitar techs when they did this went, this is borderline unsellable because the frets oh. are so low. But they've dressed it now. No, no. 
they've done the they, they they haven't they've said there's nothing left to take away they've just done the best they've just done the best they can so it it's really not it's not great to play and it probably needs a refret and I think that's again the, the, the perils of buying used you know if someone had bought this guitar that didn't know really what it was and had yeah. got it you know they you know that this probably wasn't a great purchase again this was about 250 I think this went for was um, that well I mean, my this, guitars were, were cheap back then huh? do you know what the weird thing is and I, I think about this a lot for most musical instruments the price points that guitars sell at you know like 99 149 199 all that kind of stuff hasn't really changed at all in the last 30 years it's just that the speed that it takes you to earn that money yeah, yeah, is yeah. much much faster yeah. so like you know 99 pounds 30 years ago was you know in real terms just much more money than 99 pounds is now so it's going to be interesting to see when rob and i go into the store you know what it is that we find that that's kind of because, equivalent because i mean to these. i have to be honest that looks like a really good strat I mean, Ooh. if that was hung up, I would think it was like a, a relic custom shop job. I might get it refretted. I mean, that's going to be another probably 80 quid. Uh, you, to know get it got, you know what you've got to do. You need to get a Fender to make you a guitar like that. They do. They, they, they're, obviously, the Gilmore vibe is uh, something that you can only get in, uh, in the custom shop. Sorry, not the Gilmore vibe, the official Gilmore guitar. But they've done sort of Gilmore vibe kind of limited run strats out of Mexico, Mexico or Japan, I forget now. But at sort of mm, six, seven, eight hundred pounds, something like that, they, they've come, they do them periodically. But I I'll give you some like, tones. I quite so. like how the, the plastic knobs and, and flick switch are a different color to the yep. pickup. I would suggest that these have been replaced and these have just got like old. dirty old yeah. uh, from new. <laughs> You're beginning to hear one of the downsides of the frets being so low is it, it will choke and fret out higher up. But, I mean, it's it probably hasn't bought back that warm, fuzzy feeling that that one's brought back for you. A, because it's not red. Do you want to swap B, guitars just for a because second? Because it does need uh, some TLC, but sure. Great band. <laughs> Don't go, go chasing, chasing waterfalls. Stick to the rivers and the streams that you're used to. This feels just like. Um, do you remember we went to we went to Fred America yes, and, yes. and they would throw me like you know eighty grand tellies and it feels like that because it's so worn down. Yeah, surprising really. I mean, I you know somebody's obviously got their money's worth out of that guitar over the last thirty years because you know I own guitars that are just as old as that and I haven't played them enough to need them refretted. So. Get it refretted then, mate. I might do. Yeah. <laughs> to play because of the, the fret of the work. Frets, in yeah. fact, if, if, if you'd be forgiven at some points to feel like there's no fret. Yeah, it, I mean, it's bad. And again, I just, uh, no, you know, no beef with the, the person selling it. You know, maybe they didn't know or whatever, but that's the perils again of buying off of a private. Not up here though, um, you're fine up here. Look. Has it they got didn't play some up life here? left up Yeah, there, they didn't play it there, so you're um, fine. Just play it there, mate. I'm a 
but then here again they play. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so next stop is we should go into the store and somehow agree. Perhaps we should agree it here before we go. What are we? Are we? Have we got a monetary value, or are we just trying to well, find the closest thing to these for I sort think of nowadays? It, it, we need to say. Beginner's budget, under yeah. 300 quid. I'm getting jealous you're holding my guitar now, so. Okay, let's go, let's go into the store. Let's go into see the store. See what we can find. Let's do it. If I had to go back in time, and then walk into Anderton's, I'd be totally overwhelmed, because back in the day when I was a kid, there wasn't a store like this that sold guitars. In fairness, this store wasn't like this when no. we were a kid either. No. So. What would I get now? So I guess if, if we're sort of saying that you spent a couple of hundred pounds back then, uh, I think it would be fair to suggest that, you know, up to 300 pounds now would be sort of similar. So we're, re we're really talking, we probably are talking about that purchase where it's not the very first guitar. It's like you've done the really terrible one you, yeah, and, yeah. You're, and you're into it. And this you're, is like the first one where you're going, oh. You're trading something so, in to get I mean, something I, else. I saw this and I'm thinking, you know, it's Larry, it's Steve Vai. It's probably more than we you, just you said. Are, you are a hundred percent on the money of what, like a sixteen-year-old Rob Chapman oh, wanted. Mate, sixteen-year-old, seventeen-year-old Chappers would have lapped this up mm. like a plate of hot pizza. Because there's not really nowadays that whole bright yellow, bright pink thing is nothing like as as kind of popular. Now it's all about you know big translucent finishes and beautiful yeah. wood tops and all that kind of stuff. So there's probably not. It was because I was really into an album called Shampoo Horn. <laughs> Anyone else remember that album? It was a great <laughs> album with Dweezil on it and Nuno Betancourt did some solos and stuff and it was just, it was awesome. I really like that. But this, we, need, we need something like lo lower well, price. I actually bought one of these. Oh, you did? Didn't, yeah, but you, years yeah but the proper, you bought the proper No, 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 no. Um, I, bought, I bought one of these as well. Oh, you bought a junior? Off of uh, a friend of mine who was selling one. I did not know. Um, but I'm sort of looking around. Now, there are lots of Ibanez and, and this kind of price point guitar for lower prices. Although, in fairness, at Anderton's, Ooh, we do that? tend to put more of the dearer stuff on display. Oh, this looks expensive, actually. What are you looking at? Oh, it's 575. Um, but this, this is a little bit like the, the specification of what I've got, except it's obviously three humbuckers. Oh, you know what? You just touched a guitar that definitely would have been my thing. And I- So inappropriate fun, for a funnily, beginner. Well, no, funnily enough, um, when I ended up going to the ICMP to study guitar, I had a Jackson V, it was a King V, uh, and it was, it was totally inappropriate for a student to take to a guitar school. Uh, it was a full fat Jackson V, and I ended up selling it for an ESP body that I then had Chandler guitars in queue soup up and it turned into this beautiful natural wood super strat thing. But I would have definitely gone for that. And this is 258 quid Randy Rhodes electric guitar, JS32T. It's a hardtail and I loved Vs because I was a bit of a Megadeth fan. So this would have been right up my alley. I'm, I'm not convinced. Well, A, it's nothing like the, the RG. It's yeah, nothing like the got. RG, no. And B, I'm never convinced that, that you know, beginners should go anywhere near the shape of guitar. Um, let me, one of the things it's definitely worth doing in Anderton's is uh, only about maybe even a third or a half of the guitars that we actually stock are on display because of the, we just don't have the space to put them all out. So if you're in Anderton's and you're thinking, I wish, you know, I, I wonder if they've got something else. Always grab one of the sales guys. So this is what we're gonna do now. So Dan, um, what have we got that is more like RG style, ibanez -y, round about the 300 pound mark, something kind of with it. It's gotta be a color that Rob's gonna uh, like. This is like having a personal shopper immediately. Yes. Um, <laughs> I mean, if you, if you like blue, uh, there's an RG 421. I will um, look at anything that well, you suggest. Go and grab, go yeah. and grab that yeah. and we will check it out. Exactly. Thanks man. Nice. Ooh. Yeah. And so how much is, is that? Uh, 349. What's interesting so, is so 349, four and you get a pretty fretboard, and it doesn't have that feeling on the neck where you feel it and think, oh, it feels like a cheap guitar. And it's the kind of color that would have got me excited as a kid. Right. And it comes with a fairy door. We might be in. Okay, so that'll be your modern equivalent. Is it actually only 349? Yeah, 349. It's good, isn't it? Um, let's go and find mine. 
Come on over, Mr. Robert. So, we are Ooh. in the Fender section now. Um, now, I don't believe that Fender make anything out of Korea anymore. I, I, I could be wrong, but I cannot recall anything. So it goes kind of China and Indonesia for the low-end stuff, then Mexico, Japan for the mid-range, and American for the expensive stuff. Now, and I'm almost certainly not going to be able to get a proper Fender, not brand new anyway, for around about the 300 pound mark. But what I can get, which I just spotted from here, which has caught my eye. A mustard lime green? Well, it's, yeah, it's that kind of butterscotchy TV yellow kind of vibe, <laughs> isn't it? But I like the big headstock. It's definitely got a vibe. It's got Duncan Design pickups on it. Right. And it's about 300 pounds. 301 um, or I could, 307, I can't tell. I could probably, again, I don't really know if this is really my thing. Which one do you think is more me? Well, the blue sort of, one is a million percent more your thing. You think so? It's, you, look at the, everything you wear is blue. That's true. The You're in a store with a, with a corporate color of blue. I mean, it's crazy now, because I've just realized the Squire classic vibe. Do you remember the ones that we did those mod videos on? Yeah, yeah. That classic vibe is 430 pounds now. Wow. Still for something made in China. Things have just dramatically changed. Yeah. So I think, uh, well, and this is, I mean, I did see that GNL there, but again. Well, you know, you know like, we are, we are, we're, we're obviously not mentioning the elephant in the room, <laughs> which is that we make, through Chapman, a traditional S-type guitar. Yeah, it's, uh, Probably a little bit unfair price-wise. I mean, I've got to be honest. Well, I don't know. Or is it though? Is it? Four twenty-nine. So it's seventy, eighty pounds more than your guitar. But that is. Mm. Which one? If you look at the two, and you forget that you own half this company. <laughs> I know. What shall I do? YouTube, choose for me because I know. I mean, if, I, if I choose this one, it doesn't really matter whether I like it more or not. You'll all just think I'm being. Uh, for contrived. the good of the world, I would go with the Fender. Yes, I'm going to go with the Squire for the good of the internet, but I do prefer this one. But I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm going to go for the Squire for the good of the internet. Um, so we found our, our axes. And in fairness, this is probably more similar to that black strat anyway. Yeah, totally. So, right, let's go plug these in. I'm intentionally playing the way I would have done when I was an 18 year old boy. <laughs> I'm playing because... nothing like I would have done when I was 18. I'd have been uh, uh, playing. I'd be playing. <laughs> because that was. So the I band was doing I a very similar thing, but yeah, I was so... doing. So what are we proving that basically the electric guitar, all the riffs are fundamentally the same as they were 50 years yeah. ago even, or 60 <laughs> years ago. So even that riff that you just played there, that's a 30 something year old. Yeah, so isn't it? Yeah, Crazy. oh man, but. Yeah. Great riff though. Woo! So let me be brutally frank. Well, you can be, and I'll be um, Brutally Shirley John Rivers. Right, mm -hmm. um, this neck, feels really nice and these pickups sound really good and I love the look but it doesn't play as well as the RG behind me. Yep. I think 
that we may have pitched our financial gun slightly too low. I, I must what do you admit, think? Well, I think we probably should have scientifically used some sort of inflation calculator to say what is, <laughs> you know, what was two hundred pounds. Can we? Can we do that though? Yeah, we probably can. There must can. be something online. Okay, what do, is? Do hang a, on, a hey Siri, here. let's just let's do this. Oh wow! Yes, we've undercooked this by a mile. Really? So, according to officialdata.org, a hundred pounds in 1988 would be worth two fifty currently, Holy 254. Shit, so really? actually 200 pounds. We should have been shopping for more like five, a five, nine, nine. Well, like a, just over 500 pound guitar. Wow. So you're totally right. No wonder, because I was, I, I was drawn to the same conclusion, which was that I, although this, the fact that the frets aren't completely destroyed obviously makes this guitar much easier to play. Yeah. It doesn't sound as fat as that one. And right. the back of the neck doesn't feel kind of like I've got quite as much. And I, of course, I've got a Squire. I didn't get a Fender. Given that kind of budget, I would have gone for a Charvel. I think had we had 500, we'd have got... Clo- wow, that's crazy, though, that 200 pounds from the late 80s is now 500 pounds. Yeah. Although I guess in real terms, the whole point of that exercise is that the amount of time it would have taken you to earn 200 pounds then is the same as what it takes you to earn 500 pounds now. Surely, I suppose so. surely that is the whole point yeah, yeah, of the exercise. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it? So, wow, we were lucky then. Well, then we, we kind to have of like 500 pound guitars when we yes. were Well, you we know, were lucky. we were very lucky. But then, not that mm. it's nepotism, but I but mean But it just felt back then that that was that, Well, I was going to say that was the only place to go if you just had yeah, like, yeah. like your starter guitar was your 100 pound It would have been a little bit easier for you. Yes, I would have um, got a good deal. For yes, sure. um, but and, and I there was only one guitar mm. store in my local town that sold anything, and they were all secondhand. Nothing was new. You, no one bought a new guitar when I was a kid in my mm. town. You bought secondhand. Yeah. Uh, although my brother did, and he had to order it, and it took two months to be delivered. Yeah, I think it's, it's a Kirk I mean, There's a ESP. lot for sure. There's a lot of secondhand. Well, look. So there we go. Well, look, let me what just. Are we, let's give them tones anyway. Give them tones so anyway. So I've got. An Ibanez yeah. RG421 AHM BMT. See, I, think that, I think that's a bucket load of guitar for that kind of No, boat. it sounds great, and the, yeah. the neck feels really nice. Yeah. There are lots of positive points. It's just comparing it to my yeah. 80-pound RG. 60 pounds, the 60 black pounds. one was. Yeah, the yeah. yellow one was, wasn't they, they, they both play really, really, really nicely. But no, let me give you some tones. I've got a secret pedal on the floor that I'm not going to tell you about. Ooh, but this is the amp tone. Quite dark. dark very yeah, dark. quite dark. I have to double check myself. You're going into the V40 Deluxe, are you? Yeah. That's mad. That's yeah. supposed to be a clean amp. Well, B um, uh, discovered a secret with it. Just, uh, they found the Martin Kidd setting. If you, yeah, if you put on. the volume all the way up, <laughs> but then turn the master yeah, a bit lower, that amp has it got, gives you so, a sound. So here's my guitar. I broke a string on it whilst two. tuning it up. You broke two strings I did. on it. And I'm, and I'm struggling. See, it sounds thinner than that does. But it's, anyway, it sounds like a Strat. You know what we should do? Just quickly go back I, to... Yeah, I was going to do exactly the same. Here's... Oh, 
I don't know, maybe it's in the mind, it doesn't sound that different. Well, you know, you know what these have got? They've got that, they've got that played in vibe that's just nice, isn't it, on a guitar? Are we saying that everyone should just buy second hand guitars? Well, or relics or whatever, but that's a whole other story for a whole other day. Uh, anyway, look, I've been a captain. I've been Robin. Thank you very much for making this dream come true. You're welcome. And thank, thank you, you very, Miguel. Yes, and, and thank for, you very much for, 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 for joining us on this journey. Uh, it's been of, a long journey. Tone. It has. So yes. we better go, haven't we? Right. right. Bye. Au revoir. Oh, shot. What was your Got little? Off. What was your little amp, by the way? Oh God. Because I know what mine was, and, uh, I thought, and I thought it sounded brilliant. My little amp. I wish they'd bring it back. But. It was an entirely analog. It wasn't even digital, and it was a little co one by twelve combo, knobs on top, and I don't remember what the brand was, but it had like a grey grill cloth. It's like a like a affordable distributor's own branded right. kind of thing and uh but my first it sounds like a session amp all gray with the knobs on top and gray, might have been yeah it, like that sounds like too good for what i had okay. but the, the the first proper amp i had and i'll never forget buying this and I actually recently posted a photograph of me playing it which was fun uh, was a marshall rack preamp <laughs> jmp1 yeah into a into a rack unit but that's the only thing that's in it Right, and then uh, that ran into a pair of powered one by twelve speakers. Each speaker was powered. Wow, that's cut. that would have been like super like cutting edge back in those yeah. days. Yeah, well, well, because I wanted a stereo sound because I was being Vice, mm. Satch, and Dweezil. So I had one each side of the stage, stage, pub, uh, venue, whatever. And uh, yeah, and then on the floor I had a wah pedal and a metal zone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I mean, I I had the the, the Marshall twelve R which was, um, it was a practice amplifier, kind of entry-level thing that Marshall did. Pretty sure back in those days, again, it was, would still have been made in the UK, but it was affordable, you know, like <clears throat> under hundred pounds. And it had reverb in it, and I think it had a, a like a, didn't have a 12 inch speaker, I think it might have been a, a 10 inch speaker. The, the 12 was the wattage, it was like 12 watts, all yeah. solid state. And I remember this amp, I remember this amp sounding good. And I remember my first ever like school band and that's what I took. I took that and we, there was like a drummer and a bass player. And I think the bass player probably had something tiny as well. And I just cranked this thing up and it was fine. Right. And it sounded wicked. And I, I'm, I'm a, I've always been on a bit of a downer about sort of, it's, it's the thing that I think modern digital still doesn't really do. Like, you know, you, you know, like modern practice amps, like the volume sounds great until you get like about halfway up and then, yeah. more, and then it starts going, oh, don't do this to me. Whereas, well, that's why I like quite the like the orange stuff. analog stuff yes. because at least that does that's that. That's old school, same kind of technology, isn't it? I traded my Marshall rack up for, for um, uh, a Marshall 2x12 stereo chorus combo, VS265. Right. Which was great. And I played all sorts when of When did you first metallic. go full valve? Uh, uh, when I... I got managed for the first time by a guy called Steve Lee, who was brilliant. Right. And um, I was in a band called Hooker, and he lent me his um, Mesa Boogie uh, Studio Point 2 combo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it was, and that was just such mm. a great amp. And I used to run it really hard. One day it burst in flames. Sad Ooh. story. Well, because I, I, I remember having a Fender uh, Solid State, I think it was called a Deluxe 85 or something. It was a 112, allegedly 80 watt kind of guitar combo yeah. and I just joined this band it's a really cool band you know, it was the first, so it was the first time I was actually out doing proper pub gigs so I don't I'd been about 18 maybe and the other guitar player who was younger than me but absolutely brilliant guitar player he had um, one of those red knobbed Fender 112 actual valve amplifiers I think it was called a Super 60 and I kid you not it was I might as well have just not bothered to turn, you, you know, it, 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 it was the first experience I've had of where you're on stage and one of you's got a solid state amp and one of you's got yeah. a valve amp. And on paper, they're supposed to be the same. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just like total different waste of time. Different room penetration. And I, I think I sold that or whatever and changed it for a, Mar a little Marshall uh, 112 valve amp. And, and, I, and I've kind of, the only time I've ever gone back was in, in another band I was in, probably in my mid to late 20s. Um, cool, cool band playing like heavier rock stuff, lots of all covers. And Line Six, we were quite a big Line Six dealer at the time. And Line Six gave me this 
amp that retailed for like a thousand pounds called, called, um, oh mama, can't remember, but Velta Tone or something, I've completely made that up, but whatever, but it was, it was like, they, they were trying to get into like the pro yeah. amp market, it wasn't a spider or anything like that, no. like a pro thing, and I took it to rehearsals, like, you know, ooh, like, come on, let's do this with this thing, and the band told me to give it back. <laughs> <laughs> they just went, they went, give it back. Oh, and it was like, no. It's, it's, just, it's, it's just a thing. I think, you know, I mean, in fairness, this, this, even that's probably 20 years ago now. So I know the techs come on loads and Kemper and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I'm, for me, it's just like, if you're in a band and one of you's got a valve amplifier and the other hasn't, the one that hasn't is just on a highway to nowhere. Anyway, he says, bye. 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 Hey everybody, thanks for watching the Anderton's Guitar YouTube channel. If you're a drummer or a keyboard player or interested in music technology, you might find one of our other channels interesting and I'll put details of those in the description below. If you want to find out more about the products we've just featured, please click here. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt like this, please click here. If you want to watch another video on our guitar channel, click down here. And to subscribe to our guitar channel, click here. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.